What's up guys, uh, Jordan here, just gonna bring you my regional topping deck list. I ended up getting, uh, I believe, 53rd out of top 64, and uh, I just wanted to bring you what I was playing. Uh, I went back to the tried and true, I went back to the twins, uh, I was gonna play a completely different deck, I was had it all teched out already, and then... Uh, our Lord and Savior uh, Joshua Smith dropped uh, the live twin list that you're about to see, and so uh, it just pulled at my heartstrings, and I had to play it. Basically, uh, just kind of like I said, this is pretty closely uh, resembles uh, Joshua Smith's list, so I'm going to link his deck list in the description just because i uh, got to give credit where credit is due. I didn't come up with this list. I played a similar list to it uh, the first time I got my regional top, uh, and there are some changes uh, as you can see, at least right here from Joshua Smith's list, but uh, the real theory of the deck kind of came from Joshua Smith's list. So again, I'll link that in the description. But uh, without further ado, we'll go ahead and get into the list. Uh, so the list is going to be pretty standard, especially if you've seen Joshua's list, uh, but we're going with the three Lilla, the three Kissakill, the one Frost, and the one uh, Sunny Snitch. Uh, I did like these ratios. I did feel like there were a few games that either I lost or were made significantly more difficult by uh, some of my uh, draws off of like my Kiss a Kill draws or my Runic draws were uh, multiple copies of these. I think one time I drew like uh, three cards off of Runic and it was uh, a Lilla and then two Kiss a Kills. But uh, you honestly just want to see it. You just this is what uh, allows you to just recur along with the runic stuff. Uh, the sprite stuff isn't the best anymore without elf at recursion, so this kind of just helps facilitate that and just allows you to keep playing and just eventually out resource your opponent. Uh, next, the sprite lineup will go with uh, three sprite blues, uh, two jets, one red, one carrot, and one starter. Uh, this is I think this is the ratio that Joshua Smith was playing, and I really liked it. Uh, there were some times that I wish I would have played like Double Cross or Smashers, uh, but honestly, uh, just being able to set like search this off of Jet and set this, and then they go to battle phase, and then before they can enter the end of battle phase, I just flip this to summon the carrot to force them to either have to use their evenly or just stop them from wanting to do it all together. Uh, that was really nice, and yeah, they just allow you to have some extra negates on top of your live twin stuff that's already drawing you so many cards and popping so many cards. And then the biggest engine out of everything, and I think what really makes this deck tick, is the Runic Engine. Uh, so we're playing two Fountain. Uh, we don't want Rise Heart banishing three off the top of our deck and hitting our singular Fountain. That's happened to me way too many times. Uh, so I finally bumped it up to two. Uh, then we have the three Tip, pretty standard. Three Flashing, standard. Three Freezing, standard. Three Destruction, standard. Uh, three Runic uh, Slumber, uh, maybe a little bit standard. Some people go one or two. And then lastly, uh, Runic Dispelling. A lot of people aren't playing Runic Dispelling. I personally, uh, in testing and in practice, I love this card because uh, if you can get your opponent down to kind of a simplified game state um, and you just keep adding Dispelling off of your tip or you're drawing it, uh, anytime they draw anything that can get their engine live that would add, you just Dispelling discard it and then banish two more. Uh, there are multiple times where I've played against Kashdira players where they've uh, they've like top deck terraforming to get to uh, Pressure Planet and on resolution of adding Pressure Planet I'll just dispelling make them ditch the Pressure Planet and then they can't do anything. Uh, unfortunately I don't have a battle phase to kill them but I mean they're also not playing so it doesn't matter. Where this Gets a little bit different from Joshua Smith's is I didn't have Curry Kara's before the tournament, so I just went ahead and went with uh, Dogron and Gamma Seal. Uh, I think these are probably the two best Kaijus just because uh, they're not level 7. And I mean, I just like both of them. I had secrets of both of them, so you know your boy had to play them. Uh, but yeah, just trading uh, just this special summon for anything on the board, whether I'm. Uh, Gamma Sealing and a Rise Heart, or one game I actually uh, Gamma Sealed Beatrice because I ended up playing against BA. Uh, but yeah, I mean, they're, they're sick. You know, they just allow you to do so much for so little investment. And then, I mean, if you just pop it, it's like whatever. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a way to spin it back to my hand uh, with this deck, but I didn't really need to do that ever. 
Uh, and then, similar to Joshua Smith, kind of his his call uh, playing the one tactics. It came up of quite a few times, drawing it off of runic spells and then using it on my next turn to like steal one of their monsters and link it away for a twin. Uh, was really nice, but uh, I mean, it's tactics. You know what you're going to get with it. And then lastly, uh, three evenly in the main. This card was okay. Um, I don't know if it was just because I was winning a lot of dice rolls at the tournament that this just felt kind of bad, but there were so many times where I drew this off of a runic card or uh, I opened with one or two in hand going first, and it was kind of... Uh, it, it was nice going first because it's a pitch for a fountain. It's just a free pitch, a card that I don't, I don't care about. Uh, but sometimes I would actually kind of set it and just leave it there, just kind of as a bluff to my opponent. And a lot of times they got scared of it and like popped it. And I'm like, okay, cool. And you know, just popped an evenly match that was worthless. But uh, it was nice. It it also like really helped as well when I would go first after siding. It was just a card that was very easily siding out three of. Uh, so that was really nice. Uh, just having that flexibility of just getting rid of three cards that don't matter. So that was really nice. Uh, we'll skip the side deck for right now, and we'll go to the extra deck. Uh, extra deck is going to be very, very standard, uh, pretty much very closely to Joshua Smith's list. Uh, but we got the two Hugin, the one Gary, obviously search Fountain, get Fountain back. Honestly, this card came up insane. I played against a Labyrinth player, and they... Um, or no, sorry, it was against like a Dogmatica, Pile, Eldritch, Stun concoction of a list and they flip skill drain on me and so uh, after they judgmented me and solemned me I finally was able to stick this on board and just sit it in defense and uh, summon it during the battle phase and they redeclared into it not knowing what, the, what it did and you know when it goes to the graveyard it target pops a card on the field so I just pop skill drain and then I was able to play with twins from there and set up the board uh, the one gigantic sprite uh, this is card. This card's really nice. Honestly, it just helps you get an extra body on board. Um, there are some. There were quite a few times actually that I opened up a hand and I saw like a bunch of runic cards or a bunch of sprite cards and no twins. And there is a way that you can get to your twin combo with this, with uh, summoning out one with this and then dumping the other with sprint, as you'll see in a minute. And I did that so many times, and honestly, it just felt crazy that like no matter what hand I drew, even if I didn't see a twin. Uh, I was still being able to set up my life twin plays. Uh, we have, obviously, the sprint. Like I was saying, you just dump the twin that you don't have access to, so it allows you to play around like Ash, Imperm, Baylor, stuff like that. That basically stops your normal summon from summoning the other one. Uh, Muttcracker, this card is absolutely insane. Uh, protects your board from getting blown up, or uh, can protect like a particular monster from getting hit over by battle. Uh, making this with, uh, like, making your Trouble Sunny, tributing it off to summon the other two, get both of their effects, and then linking both of them back into this, and then ditching a card just to summon back your Trouble Sunny basically just gives you a free body and also protects it again, so it's just nuts. Uh, IP Mascarena, this is used to make the God Board, as Joshua Schmidt called it. Uh, basically, you're just using this to make a Griffin, and preventing your opponent from using activated effects of special summon monsters. Um, that never happened. I think I resolved that board once. Uh, every time my IP Mascarena either got Kaiju'd, or I got Dark Ruler No more or I just it just instantly lost to something stupid. So I just, halfway through the tournament, I just wasn't even looking for this play anymore. If it came up and I had the resources, I would go for it. Uh, but I most of the time just valued other things or just kind of committing very minimal to the board that way I could, you know, I could kill later or something like that. And then lastly, for the Link 2s, we got the two Kissa Kills, the two Lillas, pretty standard. Uh, draw, pop, you know what they do. You've watched deck profiles of mine before, nothing new. Um, they just help with the recursion so much. And once you get this engine live, you're just, you're, you're cooking people. They can't really do anything, especially if they've never read these cards. There were so many people I played at the tournament who had just never seen a twin card. And they would just let stuff resolve, and they'd be like, oh, yeah, that's fine. And then, you know, they would tell me after the game, they're like, that's crazy. Like, I could never get the resource game. And I'm like, yeah, that's basically what this deck is designed to do with the sprites and the runics and the live twins. So, yeah. Uh, the Nami Unicorn, just target shuffle stuff back, really nice removal. Uh, the Griffin, obviously your bread and butter combo board if you can get there. Again, it only ever came up once, but I really liked it, it was nice. Uh, Unchained Abomination, 
This card is insane. I played against two Labyrinth players, and I was able to make this against both of them. And it, this card just into trap matchups is absolutely insane. Um, and then the last one is the Trouble Sunny. There was one uh, Labyrinth player I was playing where I ended on this after, I think, like, turn two or turn three. And uh, he was very low on resources, and he set three past. And in his end phase, I just tributed this, summoned back uh, Lila and Kissakill. Or, sorry. <laughs> Lila and Kissakill. I got a draw. I got to target pop one of his three back row, which triggered this to pop another one, and then in phase triggered this. So I popped all three of his traps and then just killed him next turn. Uh, so it was just instantly, instantly just a broken board. So that's just so, so, so nice. Uh, lastly, we'll go to the side deck. Uh, my side deck is uh, very different from Joshua Smith's. Uh, there are some similar cards, but a lot of differences. Just some stuff that I felt more comfortable playing, and I thought that were just really good into. Uh, what I was expecting to see overall. Uh, I played three alpha. Uh, my theory behind this is basically all it does is guarantees you a way to deal with something on their board. Um, if you're playing against Kashtira and they go just the Arise Heart Pass, even if they have Lance, uh, you just special summon this. And then if they didn't make it with three materials, you just activate the effect, you bounce it, and then you bounce their Arise Heart, and now you congratulations, you've dealt with their entire board. Um, if they didn't make it with three materials, they're forced to interact with this or they're going to lose it anyways. And as soon as you do that, then congratulations, you're not worried. You're not playing around a, a banish anymore, so that's perfectly fine. But this card came in so clutch in so many matches, just summoning this for free and then, you know, being able to dictate the game state from there. Uh, the other thing too is that every single one of your monsters in this deck is so low attack, even the links most of the time. So you can have a somewhat established board as long as you haven't locked yourself into twos and just special this and say uh, either this is just a big old boy that you're going to have to deal with or I'm going to get to remove a card for free. So Alpha just put in so much work. Um, three, Ghost Sister and Spooky Dogwood. Runic is notorious for playing into time. I hate it. I wish that I didn't have to play this card. Uh, but I was just running into too many times at locals and in testing where... I would just lose winnable games because people just wouldn't scoop. They would just continue to keep playing and just try to grind it out. And I'm like, this game has been over for five turns, but unfortunately I just can't kill you because of runic cards. So uh, I needed this. This came up, like I think, twice. And one one of the matches that actually lost me the game because I couldn't gain enough life points. Uh, I changed it to a gigantic. He just summoned up the smallest thing, and I had started, so I couldn't gain life. So I lost there, but... Um, Again, it was just nice to have, and it kind of functions similarly to Max C. It's not as crazy, but you know, just chaining this can force some people to just stop their combo because they don't know if they'll put up enough damage to be able to kill you or set up a good enough board that you won't be able to break it with all of just how good Runic and Twins are. Uh, the one Chaos Hunter, uh, this came up pretty much... I hard drew this quite a few times, actually, and also drawing it off of Runics isn't bad either. Because you can just special summon this. This can prevent, uh, you know, like Kashtira from banishing stuff, so they're forced to maybe have to go to the battle phase to deal with it, or something like that. It came up quite a few times. It was really nice. Uh, the Ibli, this literally never came up. The only there was one time that I had the ability to summon it off a of Gigantic, and I resolved a uh, a Runic Fountain before I Gigantic. Uh, worst idea of my life, because the draw the draw two, I drew this, and I was like, okay, well. That's pointless now, so I just I think I just summoned out like a blue to get some extra advantage, and it sucked. Uh, Red Resonator, another time card. Again, you hate to have to play him, but it is what it is in this format. It's not as bad as tier format, but still, Konami, fix your time rules, please. Uh, two hey, two hey Trunade and one Harpies. Uh, these were absolutely clutch. Um, I played, I think, two or three Labyrinth players, and they came up so huge every time. This along with, um, let's see here, where's that? Along with your destructions means that you just have six different ways to play into a labyrinth board and you're not really worried about anything that they're doing because uh, destruction will just target pop a card. Um, this basically forces out their floodgates um, because they, I mean, if you activate this, they're going to flip their skill drain or their gozen or whatever face up 
And then if they do that, then you either know exactly what to hit with destruction or you just clean up the rest of the board with harpies. You know, either or, it doesn't really matter. So that was the, this was super clutch, and I'm so glad I decided to play those for the tournament. And then lastly, uh, three Grave of the Super Ancient Organism. Uh, kind of our own floodgate. It, it's weird. I hate floodgates, but honestly, this one was fine because it didn't hit that many decks. I mean, it hit Branded. I survived probably longer than I should have against a Branded player. I survived probably longer than I should have against a Kashtira player. Uh, so this was just really nice. Um, it only hit certain matchups. There were other matchups where like I just never was going to play this card. It was just completely dead. But other than that, I mean, yeah, it was just... I feel like the side deck did exactly what I wanted it to do. And again, with playing the three evenly in the main made it to where going first, I just had three free side outs. And then typically um, the kaijus might come out. And then if I'm going second, the dispelling would come out just because there's no point in hand looping them. I just want to see better cards, uh, more blowout cards like alphas or uh, the hatronades or the harpies. But yeah, that was uh, that was the deck profile that I took to uh, the Fort Worth Regional. Again, uh, very, very standard, I feel like. Very, very close to Joshua Smith's list. I'll link it in the description below. want to give credit where credit is due. Uh, shout out to all the Abilene boys that came down and went with us. Uh, Evan, Tino, Nate, Nick, Bert, uh, Jason... Uh, I'm, I think there might have been one or two others. I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, shout out to Team Main Phase, uh, Geo, all of them, the boys. Uh, one of the boys got uh, top four, which was pretty crazy. He was playing a really solid list, and he was pretty chill, so that was dope. Uh, but yeah, you know, shout out to everyone that went, and I had a blast. I had so much fun. Um, I, I feel like I played really well all but one match, and that one match was just because I was tilted uh, after losing my first match. I was 4-0 at one point, and then I just got absolutely cooked by a Kashtira player who just drew the absolute nuts, and, you know, it is what it is. I probably could have easily finished uh, X1 or X2, ended up finishing X3, and uh, that was enough to get my top, so that's all that matters. But, yeah, thanks for the deck pro, or thanks for coming and watching the deck profile, and like and subscribe for more. Peace.